Namaste. <laughs> what I learned. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate you're here at the end of the day for this. I realize now that I see where I am in the lineup that I think I'm going to pull together some of the wonderful ideas from the last two talks. It, nutrition, believe it or not, as well as, uh, as, well as women, developing women. Uh, but my topic, as I present it, is really around leadership in general, particularly in the notion of reinvention. What kind of leadership do we need? What kind of energy do we need? What kind of leadership do we need when we, need, when we want people to be able to move together quickly? Uh, is, is this an issue that you guys deal with? Yes. It is the issue of our time, is it not? What I'm going to do is introduce myself and my firm to you very briefly so you understand where we come from and why, you know, so, uh, you know, our authority on this, I guess. The tagline for our firm is Leadership for a World in Motion. Uh, I've been doing this uh, leadership work for quite a long time now, for about 20, actually 25 years. And two years ago, my partner Sean, Shane Cragen and I came together to say, you know what, there's something different about leadership now. Do you agree? There's something different. The stakes are different. Um, it's something to do with speed. It's something to do with complexity. It's something to do with all of those things. And so we need to take what we've learned about leadership and do something more with it. So that's really what we're about. So we call ourselves Leadership for a World in Motion. Um, we, come from a, we come from a space where we deal a lot with corporations. I just put this up here so you have a sense of you know, who we've dealt with. We've dealt with some people in India. We've certainly worked with companies all around the world, North America, Europe, Scandinavia, Middle East, Asia. I actually lived in Asia for three years um, in Malaysia and did work all over Asia. Um, came back in 2014, back to the United States. I live in Boston. I just want to give you a sense that we've, we've um, you know, what I'm drawing upon as my own research base, my own experience base, is working with virtually every industry that's out there. Um, there is some virtue of getting older, I guess, right? Something else that I've done that's very relevant, I think, in the world that we live in here is I've done a lot of work with a, an organization called the Legatum Center. The Legatum Center is based at MIT, and it works with young people who are in the MIT system, they're in graduate school at MIT, and their goal is to learn what they can and go back to their countries um, and develop for-profit businesses that are socially responsible. So I've dealt with uh, young people from uh, Vietnam, uh, Colombia, Rwanda, Zimbabwe, uh, India, 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 India. There's a lot of fabulous Indians. To be perfectly honest, this is a secret, okay? But we could have populated the entire program with just Indians, because there's so many fabulous Indians uh, who come to MIT. It's true. It's true. In fact, I, I think we had to discriminate a bit against Indians, because we wanted to have enough diversity. But there was so much passion and interest on the part of the Indian students, and there was so much talent that we just couldn't take them all. So anyway, so I, I have had some experience in that way. So I'm just sharing this with you to let you know that I've been learning a lot from a lot of different places and trying to triangulate and say, what does this mean for the leadership for the 21st century? What does it mean for leadership now? And what applies to everybody everywhere, not just in the United States you know, or England? Where, um, and I wanted to introduce you to somebody who's been very influential to me. He's actually a Bangladeshi guy. His name is Iqbal Qadir, and he founded the Lagatum Center. And um, he had a very profound effect on me because he actually made his fortune um, by, f by starting the first mobile phone company in uh, Bangladesh. What happened to him is he was in New York City. He'd gone to Wharton, which everyone knows, a very famous financial uh, school. Um, he was in um, MIT, or he was, in, he was at work, and the, um, the computers went down. And so he couldn't do any work. And he said, you know what? I can't do any work. I can't communicate with anybody. I might as well be in a village in Bangladesh right now because I can't do any. And this was the epiphany. This was the, the light that went off in his head because he said, what I want to do is I want to help young people to, um, I, I want to be able to help people to connect. And so, uh, because otherwise they, they'll never move beyond where it is they are. And so this notion of connection and this notion of, 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 being, of having the freedom to connect with whoever you need to in order to move forward in your own work, very, uh, very important. 